If you've got five minutes to spare and need a refresher on the Game of Thrones saga, here's a quick breakdown of everything that happened in Season 4. Just steer clear of any royal weddings along the way. Season 4 introduces another major piece of the Westerosi puzzle, as Prince Oberyn Martell and Ilaria Sand of Dorne arrive in King's Landing to attend King Joffrey's wedding. Oberyn's goal isn't diplomacy, but revenge for the murder of his beloved sister Elia. The Lannister family's good luck finally runs out when Joffrey is poisoned to death at his own wedding feast. Whether you credit Melisandre's black magic, simple karmic payback for the Red Wedding, or just what you get for being super disgusting for three and a half seasons, Westeros is now short one petulant tyrant. Cersei immediately blames Tyrion for the murder, though Lady Olenna and Littlefinger each privately claim credit for ridding the continent of its inbred boy king. Marjorie is advised to seduce Joffrey's successor Tommen ASAP, which feels a little soon because, man, he's a, he's a child. Meanwhile, Sansa takes the opportunity to slip out of the city and join her Aunt Liza at the Vale along with Littlefinger, who wastes very little time before manipulating his way into power and grooming Sansa for her next great challenge. Cersei orders Jaime to hunt down the fugitive Sansa, but with Jaime's good side finally winning out, he instead gives his newly forged Valerian steel blade Oathkeeper and the bumbling squire Podrick to Brienne of Tarth. Her mission is to find and protect Sansa, thus repaying a debt owed to the late Catelyn Stark. Tyrion attempts to use his wits to defend himself while on trial for Joffrey's murder, but when even his lover Shay betrays him, Tyrion has no choice but to call for trial by combat. Cersei chooses the mighty Gregor Clegane, aka The Mountain, as her champion. When both Jaime and Bronn decline, Prince Oberyn is only too happy to step up and claim his revenge. And he's nearly successful. Nearly! So close! Oberyn sneaks some poison from his blade into the mountain. He's got us feeling great about the idea of justice in Westeros until he lets his guard down and... <laughs> Gross. The victorious Cersei even calls on resident mad scientist Quyburn to save the mortally wounded mountain, so we don't even get to feel good about that giant asshole being dead. Fortunately, Tyrion escapes with a little help from Jaime and sets about punishing his father and Shay for their betrayals. Having taken care of family business, he joins Varys for a trip across the narrow sea to Essos, where Daenerys is learning that being a queen is about more than having a massive army and three dragons. Even as she liberates the slaves of Marine, the other cities of Essos rise up in rebellion. Danny sends the faithful, though recast, Dario away to help maintain order and puts her invasion of Westeros on hold. She's dealt a major blow when an intercepted message reveals that Ser Jorah has been a spy all along. Making matters worse, her dragons are going through dragon puberty and torching livestock and people alike. Danny has no choice but to banish Jorah and seal her fire-breathing adolescence away in a vault. Although if anybody's having a rough go in season four, it's, well, it's still Theon Greyjoy. After months of season three torture, he's now developed a bad case of Stockholm Syndrome and fully become Reek, the cowardly pet of the sadistic bastard Ramsay Snow. Ramsay, determined to earn the Bolton name from his father, sets about claiming territory from the Ironborn and hunting for Bran and Rickon, the only threats to his family's control of Winterfell. However, the Stark brothers prove elusive. After a bad run-in with some Night's Watch defectors at Craster's Keep, they make their way to the home of the Three-Eyed Raven. Unfortunately, Jojen dies protecting the Starks from an undead attack, but Bran finally comes face to face with the aged mystic, who tells Bran that while he'll never walk again, he will learn to fly, which is sort of good news. Elsewhere in the north, Jon Snow returns to Castle Black and manages to convince his comrades he didn't actually join the Wildlings. The Night's Watch are barely able to repel a massive Wildling invasion, but not without heavy casualties on both sides. That includes Jon's lady love, Egret. Jon sees no choice but to venture beyond the wall again and kill Mance Raider. But before he can do the job himself, Stannis Baratheon arrives with his newly purchased mercenary army. As Stannis sees it, winning the North is the first step toward actually claiming the throne he nearly claimed in the Battle of Blackwater Bay. As for the last member of the Stark family, Arya spends season four on an extended road trip with the Hound. She reclaims her stolen blade needle and sees the best and worst of her new companion. When the two bump into Brienne and Podrick and the Hound is badly wounded, Arya decides to finally cut all ties and travel to Bravos. There, she hopes to track down Jack and Hagar and learn the skills necessary to avenge her family. Just a kid traveling across the world to learn how to become a ruthless assassin. What could possibly go wrong? For more Game of Thrones, check out Season 3 in 5 minutes and Cinefix's What's the Difference episode about sex in Westeros. And as always, be sure to subscribe wherever you like to watch IGN.